Hey guys, I'm Volen and in today's video I want to show you guys how you can compile the GD extension for video playback in Godot. This GD extension is called GD Gozen. It took over one and a half years to make to the point that it is now. And yeah, right now the current support, which is very important, please say that in mind when you also get the, like the add-on is available on my ko page and is.io. But take in mind the Godot version support is 4.3. And OS supports, the operating system supports, right now it's only Linux and Windows. I am trying to get macOS working and web and Android. For iOS, I'm not certain yet if I'll be able to do that or not because I don't have a Mac. I don't have a pile of money behind me, so yeah. But if you want, for some reason, to compile it for a lower version, just change the sub-module of the GD extension to four points and the version that you need. And you may need to change a couple of lines inside of the script or in the add-on script, but that's about it. So it's not too much work to support other versions, but yeah, just so you know, it's possible to support lower versions Mits you do some changes yourself. Next up, you can download the compiled versions through my coffee page and its.io. So on my coffee page, if you become a member, you are able to download this for free. Well, not for free, like you still become a member, so you still like monthly donation and such. But that's probably one of the better ways to support me, but you can also get it from its.io for $5. Yes, the compiled version is not free. And over here, I also clearly state that it's for Godot 4.3 and higher, and it only works on Linux and Windows, because some people, yeah, they don't really read, so I'm trying to make this as obvious as possible. Then we come to this part, compiling the GD extension. So how do you compile the GD extension? Well, first of all, I want to clarify, the main reason why I make this video is because People apparently don't read documentation anymore nowadays, so let's do it together. So compiling GDE goes in. A tip if you don't want to build the GDE extension by yourself and you want to easily receive updates without having to compile every time that there's a new update of the GDE extension, you can, again, get it from my coffee page or from its.io. It's out there. If you don't want to spend your time, your PC resources and your electricity on compiling it yourself. but if you feel very adventurous and you want to compile it for yourself, there are three methods of compiling the DD extension. First of all, using a Python file called build.py. So if you look into the main files, there's a file here called build.py. This, yeah, we will go over it soon, but basically it gives you a step-by-step -step guide of like what things do you want to be included and which things not. Then there's easy menu. Easy menu is a um, little application that I made to make compiling the GD extension multiple times easier because I work on it weekly, daily. So instead of having to paste the same command every single time, I can just press one button and that's it. And I compile the entire GD extension the way that I need it to for testing. So you can also use this. It's a very easy thing. I'll show you soon how that one works. And of course, you can also just use a comment line and scones. That's also a possibility. Feel free to do that as well. I will also show you how to do that. But before you do anything, this part I added this morning because for some reason, people cannot read documentation and they did not see that you need to update the Git submodules. You need Python and scones installed on your system. Some people just don't read. So yeah, Python, scones and Git. Those are the three things that you need installed on your system. And also initialize the submodules. So first of all, let's clone the repo. So if you go into the normal repo page in code, we can select this. You can do HTTPS or SSH. I do SSH because that's the proper way of doing things. And there we go, git clone, I paste in the repo. If you do this, we don't have the submodules. For that, you need recursive recurse and then submodules. I won't do that because I did not read the documentation correctly. So, oh no, I cloned the repo and I don't have the submodules. What do I do now? Well, luckily in the documentation, if you read the documentation, you can see this line. So this is to initialize the submodules. If you have the submodules, but you need to update them because you're using the repo for like a couple of weeks and you just want to make certain everything is up to date, you can do git submodule update recursive remote. But we don't have the submodules. If you go into the files, so this created a new folder. FFmpeg is empty. Godot CPP, it's empty. We need those files because else compiling does not work. Let's copy paste the command. Git submodule update init recursive. Oh, first of all, go into the uh, folder. So if you do git clone, 
you will have a new folder. Um, this one is called DD goes in. So let's first CD inside of that folder. And then let's copy paste the commands. And now it will clone. Every Vimpack is a giant repo. This may take a good minute or two. So have patience. And whilst that is cloning everything into the Git repo, it will take a little bit of time. The first method that we will go over is using build.py. Using build.py is probably like one of the better ways of doing it, especially if it's your first time compiling this GD extension. It's pretty straightforward and it has all the options that you need to have in mind. So first of all, again, you need Python 3 installed on your system. You need scons installed on your system because else this won't work. Also update the set, git set modules. To compile, it's pretty straightforward. Just run the script inside of your terminal. On Windows, use PowerShell. If you don't use PowerShell, it may not fully work. Don't ask me why I am not a Windows user. Just use PowerShell and it should work. And just use the command Python builds or Python 3 build.py. So for some reason, Python on some systems will refer to Python version 2 and not Python version 3. I'm using Arch Linux, so I can use Python. And we see that all the things were cloned. So if you look now in FFmpeg folder, the files are there. If you look in the Godot CPP folder, our scripts are there. Again, if you don't have the git submodule files, it will complain that it cannot um, do the whole FFmpeg compiling or the Godot compiling because the scons file is missing. And this is this file. We run Python build.py. So what platform do you want to build for? I'm using Linux. We have macOS and Trap and Android in there. It's clearly stating that it's not working. So Linux, then select the target, deb uh, debug. That's what we will be going for for now. Use system FFmpeg. This only works for Linux users if they have FFmpeg 6 or 7 installed. It's preferable, uh, preferably to compile FFmpeg yourself and not use a system FFmpeg because we never know if they will do a change that will break the DD extension. So we select no for not using system FFmpeg. And then we have recompile FFmpeg. This is important. If you have not compiled FFmpeg before, select yes. If you have built FFmpeg and everything works and you just want to update the DD extension itself because of an update, select no because compiling FFmpeg takes a long time. So we select one, yes. And then we have use GPL3, that's a license. If you're not going to do any rendering and your project is not open source, don't use this. Just select no. If you just want video playback inside of your Godot application or game, select no. You will have everything that you need for video playback. So no. The number of threads or cores com for compiling, the more the better, but don't type in 12 and you only have four cores in your system. I have 12, but I will go for eight because I'm also recording this. And then select the location. So we have two locations, bin and test room. The test room is meant for the add-ons. So in your Godot project, you will have a folder, well, you should create a folder add-ons, and then you can copy paste the DD goes and folder after compiling to your project and you will have your video playback note. But it will basically uh, put all the files inside of these folders. So these are empty right now. We need to fill them. We need to compile for that. I will be comparing to the bin folder that will just give the core DD extension without the script of having the video playback node. If you want to add on, select test room. If you just want the binary files to implement it, your own video playback, go to this one. In the repo, I invested time in writing uh, scripts, uh, boom, 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 uh, usage info, in which you can see how to properly use it. You can use the add on script as well as like a. Um, guide on how to create your own video playback functionality with the DD extension, but yeah. So we select bin, which is default, and we already updated and initializes, uh, initialized the submodules. So we go for no. And now it will compile. It will give some amount of like things like, oh, this is a known by example. Don't worry, it still works. It's just scones being scones. This will take time. Because right now, FFmpeg is uh, preparing to compile. And when FFmpeg starts compiling, it takes time. I'll be back. So even compiling Godot takes a long time. When you compile for the next time, Godot will already have most of the files included for compiling. So it will go a lot faster. Except for when you try to compile for another operating system, then it will have to do this entire thing 
over again. Same for FFM pack. You cannot not recompile FFM pack when you use a new operating system for, to compile for. So yeah, you will need to go through all of this again for each and every operating system that you want to support with your application. Okay, and the application is compiled, but oh no, we compiled for the bin folder and we want the GD extension. So you basically go in here, copy the folder. So we got Linux full. We go into the test room, add-ons, GD goes in, bin, Linux full, and we paste it. And now it should work. The moment that we launch the Kodo project, we should have video playback working. It will complain probably. Um, about yeah, some things not being found. So we close it once and we open it again. That's just a good old thing when loading new add-ons for some reason. So now we don't have any errors. And if we go into project, project settings, plugins, it's on. And if we start the project, this should work. Let's quickly take a video, one of my test videos that I use. Video is loading and voila, we have video playback with fast scrubbing. So yeah, that works. Next up, we have our Easy Menu. So Easy Menu is a tool I made by myself and it's kind of easy to use. First of all, Easy Menu is already something I have on my system, so I won't do this, but you don't need to compile this one by yourself. Just go to version 1.0 and go in here. This is also something I mentioned clearly instead of here. You can get the working version from the release section on the repo. In here, you can just get the correct version. After that, you go to your folder of GD Eagles N, and in here you will see a file called easymenu.conf. We can open this with the application and this should open a pop-up. So we get this pop-up, we can update the project. So that basically runs git, um, git pull. Then we can init the submodules, update submodules. There should be tool text things available, but yeah, for some reason they don't always work. Okay, so some things work, some things don't. But yeah, you basically fill in the amount of cores that you need. So eight targets, um, let's say debug as well. For the OS, we go Linux full. The normal Linux is a version that uses the system FFM pack. We don't want that, we need Linux full. For the architecture, we go for x86-64. And the location, um, you basically have to type it yourself. So or it's bin or tests room. It's easier to just do the bin folder and then just copy the files over. Goes in, GD goes in, and then bin. So that's what you will do for that one. And then we compile FFM pack. We already built it once, so we don't need to. If you do GPL3, like if you suddenly decide like, I need encoding, I need rendering inside of my application, then you will need to recompile FFM pack again. Same if you do did GPL3 before and you decide like I don't need GPL3 anymore, then you will need to recompile FFM pack again because this only applies to the FFM pack stuff. But yeah, then we press compile and it will just say a running command. You won't really see any log like we did in, inside of here. If it's your first time, this will take a lot longer. This will take the exact same amount that this took. But voila, we have a working version. And again, if we close this now, but by the way, you can save the value. So if you want to compile multiple times, it works. So if I press compile again, you will see save values, save values. If we close this now and we go into the, um, the folder again, easy menu, if we open this again with easy menu dots, blah, 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 you will see your settings were saved. And that's how I've been saving a lot of time working on TD Eagles N. But yeah, easy menu, it works, it's simple. It's not the most detailed of how to do things, but yeah, it works. And then using the command line. This is a little bit more annoying. Um, for this, I will put this next to my thing. I will quickly clear my input here. So first of all, we need to type scons. J for the number of cores, I want to use eight. The target is um, template debug. I'm just following what's written here. So I'll make this quickly a little bit bigger. So template debug or template release. This is just standard compiling of Godot that we are doing now. Then for platform, we use Linux. And then architecture is x86, oh, whoops, 86, 64. And then we come to the things that are GDE goes and specific. Use system. Um, no, we don't use the system FFM pack version, so that's no. Recompile, FFM pack is no. And enable 
GPL, whoops, GPL is no. And then for the location, let's just select bin so you can see that it actually works. So this will also finish quite quickly, except for it doesn't because for some reason it decides to recompile Godot. Um, yeah, that happens sometimes. But yeah, whilst this is running, um, if you're struggling and need help, um, first of all, a caution, Linux and Windows are the only supported platform so far. I've put it in other places in this whole repo already. But yeah, compiling on Windows may cause a couple of challenges and may not always work. So if it's not working for you and you run into like strange issues, then you can join our Discord server to ask for help. But before joining the Discord server to like, just ask like, ah, compiling does not work. Um, please check if your sub modules have been load, uh, like loaded, properly initialized, because that's the number one issue that people complain about on the, on the Discord server. And also check if you actually have the programs installed that you need, like Python, scons, kits. And if you still run into an issue after trying these three methods, please feel free to reach out on the Discord server. We will be willing to help. It's not me alone that are willing to help. Like there are multiple people who are willing to invest their time into helping you compile the GD extension. And if there's an actual bug, I will try to fix it as soon as possible, if there's an actual bug. But don't just go on the Discord server without even trying or without reading the documentation properly to just say like, uh, it does not work. Please don't do that. Don't waste my time, respect my time, respect the time of the people, of uh, all the people on the Discord server. Yeah, respect each other, respect each other's time. And yeah, sorry that I sound kind of annoyed, but it happens way too much that people don't treat my documentation properly that I put my time and effort into making to get a bit making the GD extension myself and offering the code for free open source. It happens way too many times that people don't even respect my time that I have invested. No, they just go onto the Discord server without even trying or with trying very little and just say it does not work. So yeah, I, it happened again. I got kind of annoyed. And I was like, okay, let's just make this video already. It's not difficult. It's not difficult to read documentation. Okay, and it's compiled. So we go into here, we go into the bin folder, Linux full. We could technically just copy the Linux full folder, go into our test room, add-ons, um, bin, Linux full, let's delete this folder. Let's paste the one that we just created. Let's open the project again, the test room. And and if you run this, it should still work. Um, let's take the video again, the test video. Voila, and it works. It works, compiling works. If you're on Windows, you may have some challenges. It may not work 100%. I'm sorry for that. I'm not a Windows user. If compiling on Windows does not work, sorry, we are working on it to make it better. I'm not a Windows user. Again, I'm not a Windows user. And Windows users don't seem to care about Linux users, so that also does not really help for my motivation to care about Windows users. I do care. I do care that it works, but yeah, you get what I mean. And as always, a big thank you to my coffee supporters. Without you, I would not be able to even work on this DD extension. So yeah, a very big thank you. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. I hope this was helpful and that you can use uh, compile the extension by yourself. Bye bye.